Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and 9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hey everyone, welcome to Moms in Real Estate. I'm Angela Fazio. And I'm Kristen Cantrell. Today's guest is Christy Baumgartner. And she's she's calling in from Florida. And you guys, she lives on a farm in Florida, which I found very interesting. And she runs a very successful business. She's busy with a three-year-old at home. So Christy, get us started. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello. Yes, yeah, so I... I am a boy mom, um, so I have a three-year-old toddler. We know how that is. And I work in Central Florida, mostly in the Mount Dora area. I've been in real estate for almost six years, coming up to six years now. And I do live on a farm. Um, we plan to grow the farm right now. We have um, just a few animals, but we do plan to grow it from there. And I have some big plans ahead for 2022, especially for the farm and for my business. Um, but I come with a graphics background, marketing background. I actually used to work with attractions. And then I decided to kind of turn that into my own career path and being my own boss. So I think that's such a good job to have before getting into real estate. If you guys caught that, she did attraction-based marketing. So it's I think that's so perfect. And you get a lot of your business through social media, which I feel like that was probably such a great um, learning experience to bring into owning your own real estate business. Yes, Instagram is my big um, where I pull a lot of my clients. That's awesome. I'm al I'm always fascinated to hear stories because most everyone started in some other field and came into real estate rather than just going into real estate. And I love to hear how people pull skills from their past and, and make it uh, successful in real estate. It's such an awesome story. Yeah, merge my past into my future and build it all for myself. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's Ooh, right. there you go. I like that. So when you say you pull everything from Instagram, I know a lot of people struggle with this. I feel like I feel like I hear that more than anything, right? So can you elaborate a little bit on that? So I use Instagram um, mostly. I just show up as my authentic self. Um, I've learned, you know, in the beginning when I was first using it, you know, you get nervous being on video and constantly putting yourself out there. It's a little easier when you're doing it for a client, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when it's you, it can be a little bit more difficult. And I came to learn the more I showed my authentic personality, the more I was attracting my tribe of people, my type of personality I like working with and my ideal clients. And I just blew up from there. Um, and so I am a very bubbly personality. I have a big personality and I'm not for everybody, but I was able to use Instagram to find those types of people that would want to be around me, want to work with me, love my energy and kind of match that same energy. Um, and so I do dance on my Instagram um, and I give, you know, information that people want to know about real estate, but I also sprinkle a little bit of my own life in there. So I sprinkle my son um, you know, so that other people, other moms would want to maybe connect with me and I sprinkle my farm in there. So you do see my chickens throughout some of my stories and on some of my reels. Um, but I do sprinkle a little bit of personal with business. And soon you're going to sprinkle alpacas on there, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You're going to uh, really blow soon. up. You better be ready. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know. The alpacas will be um, the thing that really brings me over the top, hopefully, you know. But the farm, I am very big on living on my farm and homesteading and how to eventually live live on my farm for myself, right? Growing my own food, having my own animals, Um and so I do plan to start trying to teach some people on Instagram how to homestead. Some people want to buy farms. They want to, you know, live on their own land. That's and genius. so I do plan, yeah, I do plan to bring, we want an alpaca farm. That is our goal. Um, it's a miniature farm, but we are, our main focus will be alpacas. So soon enough, you guys will be seeing the alpacas on my Instagram. 
So um, we can safely say that if we need a bug out place, we do. We go <laughs> to Florida and out find Florida. you. Yes. <laughs> yes, you guys are welcome to come. I've got seven <laughs> acres. Everybody just drive a little chunk of land, make it your own. <laughs> awesome. I love that. So we have um, two moms and real estate friends that came out for our Flourish event. One has 89 acres. The other had 800 in Oklahoma. I was oh, like, that's a dream. You have seven, which it, like blows my mind. Like even, I can't even you know, picture what eight hundred acres looks like. I can't either. I know. I can. I would that would be She's heaven like, for me. <laughs> You're like, I can do it. Well and you, I, I wanna I can point do that. I want to point something out that you said because I think that it's so awesome that you're so passionate about like your homestead, right? And then teaching your homestead. And what's really cool is as you start to teach people that that will bring you business. And I always like to point that out like if you are passionate about something and you're sharing it with people, like you're going to be sharing it on your social media you're going to start to attract people who are like, hey, I want to learn how to do that. I can't exactly. wait to follow you when you start teaching that kind of stuff because exactly. hopefully you're going to teach us who don't have seven or seven acres. But what we can do. And yes. those of us who don't have green thumbs, like yes. I, don't, I can, I can, I'm glad I can keep my children alive. You know? I know. Yes. No. And, it, and it's a hard balance. Um, I will say that, you know, I do balance real estate. I balance a farm and I balance being a mom. That's a full-time job in itself, right? Um, but I do want to try to spread as much knowledge as I can, real estate-wise, um, you know, homesteading-wise, being a mom, right? Um, all of the, all of my three full-time jobs. So That's then, right. what have what's been your challenges with all of that? Finding really a work-life balance. Um, you know, when you run your own business it can take over. And so finding the boundaries that you want to set with your clients, um, with your household for work and for your personal life. So like me and my husband do love to travel. Um, and that's kind of like our recharging together as a family. So we do travel often. Um, and you know, I do set a certain time that is for my family. And over the years I've had to learn where to set those boundaries. Most people don't get that straight. I don't have it straight. <laughs> Who I don't you? think anybody has it straight. <laughs> yeah. I don't have it straight. I just you try, try my best. Yeah, totally. I try. I try. I also, you have to tell the audience about your um, plans for your, the tiny houses, too. Yes. So, my farm, I plan to get alpacas, goats, um, turn it into a, a miniature farm, focusing mostly on the alpacas, and then my husband is a contractor. Um, he runs his own business, Baumgartner Renovations, and he is going to build some tiny homes that we are going to put out in the field with the animals and Airbnb them out. So it's like a second kind of income that comes in. It runs the farm um, and gives people an experience when they have an Airbnb that they're staying at. And we're close to several locations like downtown Mount Dora, Sanford, and only 45 minutes from Disney. So eventually we feel that people would want to stay there because you're getting a whole farm experience where you get to play with the animals, you get to stay in a cool tiny home, um, but you're also central to several towns. I think that's the most fantastic concept ever. I know, I love it. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm talking to my friend Taylor Hurst, hopefully she listens to this when it airs. And I'm going to tell her she needs to do something like that. I know. I'm stealing yeah, your idea. Yeah, big plan. Big <laughs> it's plan. Awesome. Merging my husband's business with my own business and then our farm business. It's, you know, lots of goals. <laughs> I love it. I think it's so ingenious to put all of those passions together. And I know you have another big goal, so share that with us. I want to start mentoring more new agents. So I personally mentor agents in my office, but... Me and my best friend, Brittany, um, we want to come up with a way to mentor new age agents like nationwide, um, teaching them about real estate, what they can be doing to try to get themselves out there to get bring their business faster, bring them more business at a quicker rate than what you would having to learn everything on your own. We do that all the time, so it's it's, it's so one of our cool biggest watching, passions. We love that. Yep, it's so cool watching other agents when they see that need and they do something about it. Is that a goal in 2022? Yes, it's our 2022 goal. We really just want to empower other agents um, and uh, empower other people. You know, this is a community. We are a community over competition. There's plenty of people everywhere for everybody to have a successful business, and so we want to teach other people our methods. 
I love that you say that. It's a com- it's com- what a community over um, competition. competition. And I think that that's, um, it's a lot more popular over the last couple of days to have that mentality. However, um, that is historically not how it's been in real estate. And a lot of people right. still struggle with that really, really hard. So I'm glad that you don't. And I think that that's a fantastic goal. I'm super excited to watch you do that and hopefully help you do Thank that. Thank you. So let's, yes, let's, let's I, talk I about that. I look forward to working together. Yes. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. C- community over competition. So were you always so abundant mindset-like? Or is that something that you've learned from, you know, is that just your mentality? Or is that something you've learned over time? Uh, that's always kind of been my mentality. I'm not a super competitive person. Um, even as a young, young kid, like I wasn't into like, oh, I'm super competitive in sports and stuff. I'm not, I'm not out to compete with others. I've always been like a super team player. Um, and how can I help you and how can you help me and how could we build things together, um, share experiences, learn from each other. I've kind of always been that way since I was young. That's awesome because uh, Kristen and I are super competitive. And I think, I think I had to learn over time that it's, it's like what Zig Ziglar says, you help enough people get what they want, you'll get everything that you want. So yeah, that yeah, I, kind of like karma, right? I put good energy out there and it, good energy comes back to me. Right, right. That's awesome. So uh, what are your real estate goals? Like uh, not your mentorship, but your, are you going to build a team? Do you want to double your production? And what's your plan to get there? Because we're coming up on the, uh, you know, to that time of year where everyone's setting goals and thinking about their future. Um, so what, what are you going to strive for and how do you go about thinking about that? I, so this year, just, I doubled my volume just this year. I want to try to double it again. So each year I try to double it again, right? Um, keep building it. So I do want to try to double my volume, bring in, um, mentoring new agents. And then I want to, I want to help more moms. So I really love to target in 2022, target helping more like moms move up, right? Move up to the next size house that they're needing for their growing family. I really would love to target helping moms understand real estate and making the best investment for their future and their kids' future. Well, you're on the perfect show. (laughs) I know. We have an audience of moms. Yes, we do. (laughs) Yes. I love other moms. I mean, there's nothing that can't connect you more than understanding each other and being a mom because nobody else but a other mom is going to understand being a mom. So I love connecting and getting to know other moms, even if it's just through real estate. Um, Obviously, I end up growing it further than that and end up making a lot of friends through real estate, especially other moms. So. I have a, a friend who's creating something that you're going to want to be a part of. And she she is a, a Moms in Real Estate guest. She's been a speaker at our events. And um, she helps empower women to become financially like, financially uh, like, healthier and, and yeah, savvy. And, but and helping them like really in the investment space. Like that is she's going to take over and then it's going to grow it. nationwide and worldwide and with you, with what you like to do, and then also let's talk about your Airbnbs and stuff, you'll totally want to be part of this group. So I'm going to make sure to connect you guys. I would love that. Thank you. So um, just what advice would you give? You're, you're connecting to moms. You're passionate about helping moms in real estate. What advice would you give a mom who's in real estate right now who's either new or struggling? What would you give to them? Set your boundaries with your clients and still focus on your child being number one. Um, so my, after I had River, I, the, that year, I didn't really go out of my way to market and pull in clients. I took what clients were coming because I really wanted to focus my time on my child because you only get those moments. But my business grew even though I wasn't out there fighting for it to grow yet. And I was connecting with other moms. So I was making connections authentically in other ways, but still spending that time with my child and being able to, you know, those, that, especially like the first year, I was able to kind of involve him into my business a lot more. Now he's three and he's running around. I wouldn't bring him to a showing. Um, but back then I could, I, I had him on my hip and, you know, I had him in a stroller and I would go to showings or I'd bring him to inspections. Um, and I was able to kind of incorporate him and let him see mommy work, right? Um, let him see how I did my business as now he's getting a little older, you know, he's wanting to touch things. So he doesn't get to come with me like that anymore. Um, but as he gets even older and he understands it, you know, he might 
come with me again um, to more showings. But I would give the advice to moms who are new in real estate is still focus on your child and make connections maybe in mom groups and at, um, you know, if you don't have your kid in a daycare, but, you know, there's a church or there's a gathering of moms that go to the park, Facebook groups of moms, connecting with other moms that way so you can still build your business, but you're still getting to spend time with your kids. That's excellent advice. I love that. Yeah. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on, and I'm sure you're going to bless a lot of people that were listening um, to your episode. And Yeah, follow Christy, Christy Baumgardner, so you can see the evolution of her farm. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Thank you. Yes, um, my Instagram is Making Moves with Christy. So if you guys want to see the alpacas coming soon, check in. <laughs> What a cute Instagram name, too. It is. Yes. Good job. Well, I danced on it, and I'm moving you into new houses, so I thought the two might go together. It does. Well <laughs> said. <love> it. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> Thank you. You guys have a great day. You, too.